Copilot can do what? Some OpenAI updates, Zed goes open source, and the best computing platform of all time celebrates a big birthday. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub, and this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. My shirt this week is from what some TikTokers call their favorite clothing brand, which makes me sad. No, no, I promise you, this is not a clothing brand. It is a band that was very famous. I digress. Uh, also, shout out in the co uh, to the commenter who noticed my off-white hoodie last episode. You're a real one. Okay, enough of all of that, let's get into the news. First up, I wanna highlight a blog post from my girl, Kadesha Kerr, on 10 unexpected uses of GitHub Copilot. Like, yeah, we all know about, you know, using it for advanced autocomplete in our coding tasks, but Kadesha found some other use cases too. And my favorite was how Katie was able to use Copilot to write a GitHub action to auto-close more than a thousand issues submitted by someone to a repo that our team uses. And trust me when I say that Copilot came in clutch and helped our team get back to work much faster than if we'd had to either write that action from scratch or even worse, close all of those issues manually. But I've got a link to Kadesh's blog in the show notes and the description. Next up in some AI news, I've got a couple of things I wanna talk about. First, OpenAI this week announced some new embedding models and API updates. And so I've got a link to the OpenAI blog in uh, the uh, show notes in the description, but here's a quick recap. So there are now two new embedding models, text embedding dash three small and text embedding dash three large. And both of these are big improvements over their predecessors and the small model is actually cheaper as well. And speaking of price drops, GBT 3.5 Turbo will be updated next week and the price on input tokens is dropping 50% and the price on output tokens is dropping 25%. And if you're already using a pinned GPT 3.5 Turbo model, it'll be updated automatically. And finally, um, there's an updated GPT 4 Turbo model in preview. And um, there's some other updates too, including scoped API keys, but you can read about all those details in the OpenAI blog that I, like I said, I've got linked below. And in another fun bit of AI news, shout out to the Olama team for their new JavaScript and Python libraries. And if you're not familiar, Olama, a project that we've talked about before, is a really easy way to run local LLMs on your own machine, and it's available for Mac, Linux, and coming soon to Windows. And this week, the team introduced a new library for Python and for JavaScript. And why would you wanna do that? Well, this is gonna make it super simple to integrate new and existing apps with Olama and a couple of lines of code, and then you can share those features as well as like parts of the Olama REST API. And both of those libraries as well as Olama are available on GitHub and a brand new organization called Olama. And I've got links to all those repos and their blog posts down below. And now it's time for my GitHub project spotlight. And this is where we highlight cool open source projects in the GitHub community. And this week my pick is Zed. And Zed is a code editor that we've talked about before, uh, probably about a year ago, because it is from the creators of Atom, RIP, and Tree Sitter, and it's designed to be a high performance and very, very fast code editor. Well, the big news is that Zed is now open source. Yay! Uh, and this is how the team describes the way uh, it's licensed. So the code for Zed itself is available under a copyleft license to ensure that any improvements will benefit the whole community. And so it's GPL for the editor, a GPL for the server side components, and then GPUI, which is the UI framework that powers Zed, which is pretty innovative, that is distributed under the Apache 2 license so that you can use it to build high performance desktop apps and distribute them under whatever license you choose. And I think that this is terrific. And I, I want to give my kudos to the Zed team for not just all the hard work they've been putting into Zed over the last year, but by literally making this work now open source for others. GPUI, its UI framework is especially cool. And I really hope to see it get more adoption from other people. And so I've got links to Zed's blog post and as well as the GitHub repos in the show notes and the description. And I also, uh, I think that I do a pretty good job of finding projects to spotlight, but I can always use some help. So let me know any cool projects that you see around GitHub in the comments, or you know, you can add me on Twitter or Threads or Mastodon or whatever, but let me know. And now it's time for my pick of the week. And this one is kind of personal. The Macintosh, one of the most influential computing platforms of all time, and my favorite computer basically since I was a zygote, turned 40 this week. 
time comes for us all. And if this does not make me feel old, the Mac might not be the most popular computing platform. That's going to be Windows or Linux, depending on how you want to quantify those things. And it might not have the best aesthetic. That's going to be Windows XP, if you're asking me. Uh, but for me, it is still simply the computer where I learned to computer on. I learned to type on a Mac. I, I saw my first web page on a Mac. I wrote my first website on a Mac. I think I wrote my first application on a PC, but that's because the late 90s, it was a hard time to be a Mac user. And of course, without the Mac, we wouldn't have the iPhone. And without the iPhone, I wouldn't know how to function. I've got a ton of links to stuff people have written about the anniversary down below, as well as a panel that the Computer History Museum put out with some of the biggest figures in the Mac ecosystem, including members of the core original Mac team, Bill Atkinson, Andy Hertzfeld, Susan Kerr, Dana Lewin, and more. And I've got that in the show notes in the description. Let me know your favorite Mac in the comments, even if the answer is a PC, that's valid. Uh, my favorite Mac for what it's worth is the G4 iMac. To me, that is still the best computer design of all time. Beautiful. Love it. And you can let me know your comments on any of the other topics we discussed this week, too. That's going to do it for me. If you liked this episode, go ahead and give us a like and please feed the algorithm and subscribe to GitHub's YouTube for all your nerd needs. Happy 60th. Woohoo! See you next time.